Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to the latest, ins latest installment of our webinar series from EPM Live. Today's topic is lower costs and increased ROI with strategic resource planning. Uh, my name is Jim Patterson, and uh, I'll be your presenter today. So let's start off with the basics on what really is resource management. Uh, one definition it's, is that it's the efficient and effective deployment for an organization's resource when they are needed. The real objective here is to really provide the right resources uh, on the right work at the right time so that we can get things accomplished in a way that strategically aligns with the goals and the objectives of the organization. If we look at a resource management life cycle from uh, more of a top-down perspective, there's the concepts of capacity planning, resource allocation, uh, overall work management, and then task management and collaboration. And we're going to go through these as far as a capability set in a little bit more detail as we go on through. But capacity planning really is that long-range strategic planning uh, objectively as you're outlining all the way from maybe the business case process all the way through monitor, monitoring and maintaining that perspective all the way through uh, a, a project or project portfolio's life cycle. Uh, it's really about providing the right resources from different organizations and different departments or teams that are actually going to support your projects and your work. Resource allocation then is really about figuring out specifically who is going to be appropriated to these different work elements, whether they be projects or non-project work. So you identify the work that you're going to do, the projects, programs, or work items that you're going to embark upon, and then you really prioritize and then allocate specific resources to those efforts so that you can actually assign them to more detailed work. All along the way, there's more operational work management that happens. Everything's not projects in a lot of organizations, and only a portion of many people's bandwidth actually go to project work. So there's the real uh, activity of getting people assigned to more unstructured, unplanned work on the operational side so that uh, the mix of work is uh, totally factored in when you look at people's ability to uh, support uh, different types of work efforts and be able to deliver on those uh, in, a, in a, a timely fashion. And then really uh, from an individual task management perspective, as you get into all these things, people will then be assigned or plans will be broken into more granular work items. And then you really have to get individual task assignments, et cetera, uh, uh, allocated to specific individuals so that you have the right skills and the right resources on the right tasks. And then in execution of those tasks, there's got to be collaborative capabilities so that uh, these resources that get assigned to this work can uh, feed back to management and to the people they're accountable to. Uh, what they've accomplished and what their progress is, as well as the other resources or teams that they may be collaborating with to successfully complete the work and providing that type of communication as well. So we'll talk about these aspects and uh, how EPM Live from a conceptual perspective can meet those needs. Because ultimately, Work is everywhere in an organization, and we really cannot be one-dimensional from a resource management perspective if we really want to be successful. You can't just look at your project resource workload if you have operational and other types of work going on, because you're really just looking at a fraction of the demand. You can't just look at the operational on the converse, because then you're not factoring in what demand projects have and maybe affect your operational or keep the lights on type of work. Also, there's other things being done in things like software development and product management or product development where you're doing more agile or iterative approaches that may not fit into the traditional waterfall or uh, operational work models. And all of these tasks or all of these work items could be on an individual resources plate. And a functional manager who owns those resources needs to understand, uh, are we uh, overcommitting resources to a point where they can't deliver on the things that they're being committed to? So from that perspective, you really need to take as broad a definition of work uh, as you need to to define all resource allocation within your organization so that you can get a complete picture uh, of what's involved. Now typically, um, what ends up happening in these days as we find this more and more is that depending on the type of work that you have, and here's three examples like service management, application management, and project management, traditional project management is that people are buying separate and distinct solutions or systems to manage these different types of work, meaning these work 
uh, this work is located in different solutions and different databases and repositories. There's parallel and separate disconnected processes that manage these different types of work. And resources and managers who work with this stuff actually have to then monitor and participate in multiple different uh, disassociated systems in order to participate. Uh, less than efficient and uh, really not an easy way to get um, uh, visibility into the resource demands of an organization. So what we really want to do is eliminate this kind of silo-driven uh, uh, type of scenario. So just so you know from an EPM Live perspective, um, we want to be able to, and we do, provide you a broad set of work capabilities from a resource management perspective. So depending on your vertical industry, uh, what business unit or department you might be part of in an organization, the types of work that you embark upon may be different. So we have all different types of templates on different work item types ready to go that can also be tailored to meet the needs of your specific business. But we also bundle these into specific, what we call uh, site apps that are bundled applications that allow people to manage work in the ways that they're needing to. Depending on your vertical industry or the type of work that you're doing, you may be doing more traditional project portfolio management or my, more IT service management work or possibly more product development types of things. Uh, there's some examples here where you have different flavors, but it's all work nonetheless. And one of the things that EPM Live wants to do is provide you the ability to tie that all together and really be able to look at all work within the single umbrella in the context of a single solution. Now, our focus today is really on the resource management aspects of this, which is a very important, yet really just one aspect of what an overall solution might uh, uh, address for you. So if you think about the vision here, without the silos, if you want to get all work into a common solution, uh, the vision here is to provide you a singular funnel where all work can go through. In this case, you're looking at projects or incidents or change requests or other types of things. And even though it's one funnel and one solution, uh, each of them, depending on how they're categorized, triaged, or whatever, may be uh, put down through a separate uh, work stream, an approval process, depending on the rigor, the size, and the type of work, yet all through a common solution. Meaning, uh, as I get assigned things, as it's going through the approval process, as work is being executed on, uh, all of that has common visibility through a common solution, even though there may be different work types that are going through this funnel. What's nice about this is that things like analytics and reporting and dashboarding become a much more natural output of the process rather than having to tap separate and distinct technologies, solutions, databases, etc., like we showed in that disconnected uh, silo slide earlier on. So in a, a full-featured PPM or work management solution, resource management is just one feature uh, of, a, of a robust feature set, but it's very important and integral in our ability to deliver such uh, types of work. So let's look at from a top down. Let's look at the beginning of this resource capacity planning piece. If you think about what we do and the steps you take and the uh, items that you address through resource capacity planning, one is, initially, as you get a project online, you want to know what types of resources you need, long before you actually get uh, uh, specific names involved. So you may identify generic roles or types of resources and skill sets that you need for a project. Then you probably need to determine the estimated usage for each role. What quantity do you need? How many hours per month or per week? What, how many FTEs uh, might you need of uh, uh, what's going to be needed? Something on a business case level perspective when you're saying, this is my resource ask, this is what I'm requesting for a resource in order to uh, uh, perform on this project or other piece of work. You also want to identify potential resource constraints, meaning in the context of what's already committed to or already being considered, how does this uh, piece of work fit into the mix? Uh, and, and are there constraints or over allocations that need to be considered and need to be resolved? And if so, you need to analyze and adjust that resource plan so that you have something that's achievable and doable within the constraints of the resources you have at your disposal. And once you've done that, you can finalize the plan for resource allocation and then commit those resources uh, at that point in time and then figure out who specifically is going to fill those generic roles on those projects. So that's kind of the step early on from the top down on this high-level resource capacity planning. 
if you look at this from a uh, um, EPM Live perspective, as you're going through the general operation or onboarding of a project or other piece of work, a resource capacity plan really is high-level planning. As you see on this screen here, you might be saying for this particular project, and I can plan in terms of full-time equivalents, FTEs, or hours, and in this case I'm looking at FTEs per month. Uh, up above there, I'm focusing solely on generic resource roles. And it says here that I need a developer resource or resources. And it looks like I'm going to need what's estimated as a full FTE of effort over a four-month period. From a project manager's perspective, it looks like I'm going to need a half an FTE of a project manager over that four-month period as well, et cetera, et cetera. And you would go through this for all the different resource disciplines that you might need. So you can quantify these things. And quite honestly, you can have this be a negotiation process whereby a project manager may request or define what's needed. A resource manager may help size that as far as you know, what the degree of uh, effort is required. And then actually start doing the analysis as to who specifically, specifically could fulfill that role uh, on that particular project. Now, when you look in context of all other uh, competing priorities or existing projects, you really need to look at this beyond just a singular project or work effort that you're uh, building this resource capacity plan for. So in that case, you may look at something from more of an aggregate analysis perspective, whereby uh, here is a collection of projects, both possibly active and proposed. And then looking at either from a role perspective or down below here looking at this heat map on an individual name basis, if we do all this work, you know, where are we over and under allocated based upon our capacities to deliver different types of resources into this? Or maybe aggregate that heat map down below uh, by role to see are we over or under allocated on our DBAs or our developers in general or on our project managers, uh, not just on an individual name basis. But the key is, until you get that perspective, uh, you do not know uh, whether or not you're over or under committing resources or under utilizing your capacities as well. So in that case, uh, this gives us a good idea that we do have some hot spots where the red is involved, showing that uh, based on this collection of projects that uh, we're uh, considering doing, certain resources have constraints that would seriously impact their ability to deliver on time and with quality on any of these projects. So what you can do and what you need to do in that, in that analysis is be able to do some what-if modeling. In that case, be able to actually have scenario snapshots that really don't impact the uh, production data, let's say. And the idea here being is that you can do things like deselect maybe lower priority projects or work efforts. Or you may take certain uh, projects or work efforts and drag them out in time or extend them over a longer period of time to delay or change the sequencing to ba uh, basically fit within the constraints you might have from a resource perspective. The key is, is that you can do as many scenarios as you want to to look at potential alternatives and figure out collectively as a group which alternative meets the overall need of the organization, the demands and the constraints of the different departments or participating organizations. And then when you start looking at these types of things, the types of reports that you may want to run might be department driven, might be role based driven, might be uh, the organization as a whole, and looking to see whether or not we're over and under allocated at any given point in time or time windows on these types of things. The key is, I believe, is if we have the ability to see this type of information as we progress or as we go through the process, the likelihood of us um, unconsciously uh, severely over allocating resources diminishes uh, because we can look and see before we assign a resource or a type of resource to yet another bundle of work, uh, we can see where the uh, existing commitments are. So we can make intelligent choices as to who may or may not be available or whether or not we can take on a new piece of work now or maybe we have to do it three months from now or possibly move out another existing project for a while in order to take a higher priority project. So the key is visibility to this information at your fingertips is really the power and the key to be able to doing this resource planning from a capacity perspective on a much more effective basis. 
So let's just say we've got a collective resource capacity plan. We've done this at a high level. We've determined what roles we need. And it could be totally generic resources at this point in time for proposed or projects that are coming uh, on board or potentially coming on board. So what about the allocation of specific resources to that work? So in this process, we've got a capacity plan more than likely done by roles and type of resource or skills. So then we have to match potential candidates with the potential uh, role designation or skill sets that could fill those generic, uh, let's just say, uh, allocations or um, uh, those generic skill sets that have been earmarked for certain projects. When we find potential candidates, we can then assign named individuals to fill those roles. So we go from more general or generic resources to more name-specific individuals to fill those roles on projects. We can then confirm the project or work assignment and duration to make sure that the estimates are accurate. We can verify resource assignment with the necessary parties and through a negotiation process between project managers, the resource or functional managers, be able to say, yes, you can have this resource for that half an FTE over that two-month period for your project, for example. And then as projects progress and things change as they will, be able to use that visibility in those plans to manage future, sh future shifts in resource assignments so that we can accommodate those things and maintain the capacity plan as current. So in that regard, you could take what was prior uh, just a generic resource plan and basically find matches by using a matching functionality to get name-specific individuals in the bottom pane, as you see here. And then I can say for that software development DBA role, uh, show me who might be able to fulfill that. And also, show me what remaining availability they might have. Uh, I showed you earlier on that there was planning being done in FTE basis, but the hours conversion to that could also be equally as valid. Here, I'm looking and seeing that uh, Alice was a good fit for that role, and so through that match, we decided to make Alice the DBA on this project with her remaining availability, looking like she has the bandwidth and to accommodate this piece of work. Also notice uh, the columns to the left in the top pane where the project manager and resource manager have both gotten on board and approved this and say they're both happy with that resource allocation. Now from a resource allocation perspective, there's also the ability to say, you know, by, we, by assigning them, we're really making them part of a project team. So from a project management perspective, uh, long before you actually start assigning people to detailed items in a task list or a schedule, as you're seeing here, what you want to do is potentially build a team. You might have an organization where the resource pool of potential resources that are across the different functional organization would be hundreds or even thousands of resources. But for this particular project, you may only have four or five resources that really apply. So when you make people part of that team and when you look at that build team down below, you want to be able to focus on that team rather than the larger pool so that when you're assigning people to detailed tasks, you're picking from that maybe four or five people than rather, rather than navigating through that larger hundreds or thousands of resources that are potentially at your disposal. So this whole idea of a team and then giving people appropriate level of access to a particular project um, based upon the needs and their role on a specific piece of work are all things that should be uh, available to you in a solution that allows you to manage resources. And then when you go to assign resources to these detailed tasks, only people that are on that team would be made available to you in order to do that so you can maintain focus, meaning a streamlined uh, uh, process, uh, ease of assignment, and also being able to uh, really limit uh, the choices that you might have in order to uh, uh, assign resources to a project. So if, for example, you needed to add someone additional to your project, go through the process of adding them to the team or getting approval to add them through the team through that resource negotiation process. Also, the example I showed you prior was using EPM Live's uh, Project Planner, which is an online waterfall scheduling tool. Uh, these types of things can also be done after you build a team using a tool like Microsoft Project. Through built-in integration uh, and bi-directionally, you can do the same types of things where you can define a team and then figure out who's going to be allocated to what tasks using the tools in Microsoft Project as well. We actually publish that data out to EPM Live, so regardless of whether you're using a tool like MS Project 
or our own online planners, the net result of getting that data or that work into our system for general overall resource planning, the net result is exactly the same. All right, then there's the concept of resource work management. Now, the differentiation here is, from a project management perspective, you know, there's more structured planning, waterfall projects, et cetera. The idea on the work management side, things may be more operational in nature, service requests, tickets, uh, incidents, the types of things that are more unplanned in nature. Well, in order to look at resource total workload for a lot of people, a lot of companies, this is a significant portion of people's workload or bandwidth. So in that regard, we need to look at this in the mix. So for example, we have to manage work assignments on these detailed uh, unplanned pieces of work. We have to track resource performance and how much time they're spending on these types of things. We need to provide continuous feedback and status on these items that come up on a more ad hoc basis. We have to resolve issues and mitigate the potential risks. And on the operational level, these types of things tend to have a sense of urgency on them when things are breaking or there's production issues or those types of things. And then also, as these things impact the overall resource uh, uh, landscape, we have to respond and adjust to the resource changes that these things bring about. So keeping in mind that work is everywhere, and a significant portion of this work in some organizations could be this more maintenance or uh, incident-based uh, type of work. So we have the waterfall projects where we've assigned resources to already. We have Microsoft project plans that we've published out that have resource allocations on them as well, so there's commitments there. We might even have agile, a more iterative-based methodologies where we're actually uh, assigning people to backlog items and other elements within these agile endeavors. So these are things that are more planned or structured pieces of work that may already be in play. But what about the unstructured work items? They could be issues, incidents, etc. cetera. Um, these come up. People need to be assigned to them so they get resolved. But you need tools to kind of keep them in the mix and give you visibility. For example, as we'll show you in a little bit, uh, the concept of saying, here I have an issue that's going to take significant bandwidth. Let's just say it's going to take uh, at least 20 hours of someone's time to uh, address this. Uh, it would be nice to assign a resource to this, but also then check to see if that resource has other competing priorities to see if it's even feasible for this resource to tackle this piece of work now. Or if you really need this resource, maybe find a time slot where that resource may have availability and see if it's going to impact our ability to address this at all. So the key here is, is be able to do the resource analysis before you commit specific people to these unstructured or unplanned pieces of operational work. All in all, if you start looking at all work types, you can start getting uh, total work management views so that when you look at individual resources, you can see on a weekly, daily, monthly basis um, where there may be peaks and valleys in whether or not we've overcommitted different resources. Here, like Adam Barr down below, uh, is overallocated in June and September. Uh, and uh, you can actually drill into a report or a view like this to see what specific projects or work items are driving that. So the key is, is that uh, very easily on the unstructured mix, you can add that in here so you can do total resource management across all types of work. Now, as resources and as functional managers, our resources have been assigned across a variety of different work types now. Different types of projects using different methodologies, operational work, and other items. So what about the overall resource collaboration around that and task management? So from a collaboration perspective, we have to define our shared goals and objectives. We have to track status and provide real-time updates so we all know where everything stands. And we have to provide teams with effective tools to collaborate and communicate with each other and with management and the people that we're accountable to. So for example, from a resource collaboration perspective, this fictional resource, Steve Masters, uh, has his own you know, personalized view of the world. Uh, so for example here, uh, he can see what projects he's actively involved in right here uh, that he's either an owner or a member of. There's a My Work function that's actually giving him a view of the things that are most currently due or overdue for him. 
that he can see what's on his plate and actually provide a vehicle for him to provide feedback and status and completion on those items as well. And also, uh, he has some collaborative things in there like uh, commenting and things like that that we'll talk about a little bit more as well where he can communicate with others that he's working on with projects and on tasks. And also just notifications and alerts either from a more passive my reminders area there or notifications area all the way through more active email alerts or notifications that come to Steve to let him know when things are pressing or things are getting put on his plate. Also regardless of whether these things are being done in a tool like Microsoft Project or other things, for example, our uh, work items in this solution can be rendered and very simply in the browser uh, in EPM Live be updated. So whatever items you want, like start and finish dates or completion percentages or actual hours being spent or remaining work estimates, whatever they might be, those resources can provide that feedback in that browser from a central solution and immediately have those updates be collaborated or communicated to the interested parties or people that need to know that information uh, uh, when they have a, a more overview uh, perspective in managing projects or work elements. From a time management perspective, a lot of organizations want to cap capture actual hours, understanding what's actually being spent against projects, either for just overall general management purposes or possibly for billing or chargebacks or other types of things. So the idea here is a built-in solution to really track actuals. Because everything we've talked about uh, to this point so far has really been about uh, planning resources or forecasting the use of resources. When projects or other work gets underway, uh, we want to potentially, in a good practice way, understand where time is actually being spent as opposed to where it was planned to be spent. So the idea of being able to report time against project or other non-project or operational work is something that uh, can be very important, as well as reforecasting uh, remaining work and things that are left to go. So having that built into an overall solution is very important. We also have a concept of a work log. So one of the things that when you incorporate more quick hitting types of work, the unplanned work, the incidents that may take a few phone calls or it may, may take an hour or less to, to resolve. Uh, no one wants to go into a work item in a work list and then potentially have to back out to a separate timesheet view each and every time they want to report timing at something. The concept of this work log is how to communicate that I've spent the time but without having to back out and go to a timesheet every time I do it. So in this, re uh, in this case, I have the ability to say that defaults to today's date, how many hours did I spend on this today, some metric on what's already been used against this, and some notes against that to basically provide that feedback or communicate or collaborate to the requestor, to my manager, and to whatever reporting that needs to be done within the organization. And on the back end, we'll actually automatically populate the timesheet with this information. So a very streamlined, efficient way to go about providing actual hours against projects or other types of work. From a resource collaboration perspective, you may be involved on a number of initiatives, a number of different projects, and instead of having to monitor each and every one, being able to look at what's been put on my plate as far as, in this case, issues, and looking and seeing it aggregate across all the projects and things gives me a good way to communicate to me and give me a good vehicle to communicate out to others what I've been able to tackle and what I've been able to resolve. And more and more, uh, EPM Live is really uh, incorporating more social media uh, approaches to communication and collaboration. For example, discussion threads, uh, comments or comment streams where, uh, where one or more people are collaborating on a task or a project in general to be able to communicate without having it be lost or segregated out into separate email inboxes or whatever it might be allows us to maintain that as, the, uh, as part of the repository of project and work management information from our resources. And just from a notifications perspective, having a, a resource in a very Facebookish-like fashion be able to see everything that's been put on their plate and get notifications on what's uh, needing their attention and at a click on them be able to then resolve that or fulfill uh, that notification with completion status or uh, get information on what the details are around that item. The key here is, is that 
uh, all different ways to communicate, stay in the loop, whether you be online, offline, or on a mobile device. Then taking it to the next step on resource task management. So as you go through the detailed task assignments, you gather work assignments, you provide status and updates, and then you really, in the in-process measurements, you monitor overall health of all work and all dependencies that you might have on that work. So one of the things that we have in this all work uh, world in EPM Live is the ability to have what we call that my work area. Showed you a small web part on Steve Master's homepage, but in this case, Notice the, all the different work types. I could have issues, waterfall project tasks, service requests, action items, uh, you know, workflow approvals, whatever it might be, they all come into a singular work bin for me so I can manage and track all my work. And then I can provide feedback and status on those and even provide comments on those so that I can communicate uh, progress, completion, and any issues I might have regarding any of these things as all, uh, at all. We talked about the alerts capabilities. Uh, these are more passive alerts. We showed you the notifications in that more uh, Facebookish like fashion. And we've always had the ability to, uh, to, to incorporate email notifications so that people can have pushed to them uh, uh, notifications on when things are uh, uh, assigned to them, when they're due or overdue, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And now, I've been assigned all different types of work, and I saw it in the My Work area that I've got issues, I've got project tasks, I've got to-dos, other things. But be able to look at an individual resource or even a group of resources from a functional area, for example, and be able to see where resources are over and under allocated based upon the total mix of work. If I look at the uh, colored bar at the bottom for Adam Barr, which is the selection on this resource, when I look at the resource allocations over the time here, uh, what's indicated to me down below there in that first piece where it's green, it's saying he can do that because he's really only allocated about 3.3 .3 hours per day uh, in working on that. But he jumps up quickly to 8.5 hours per day and seems to be no less than 8.6 over a multiple week period out there. So there are some over allocation periods that need to be resolved. All the while, uh, because we're building a rich repository of resource information, both from a capacity planning basis and down from a very detailed task assignment type of basis or work item uh, basis, being able to provide that information through robust reporting at a very detailed or at a high level is something that is now easily achievable because we have a centralized repository for all this type of information. So with that, thought I'd give you a glance in the live software of some of these concepts in action. So here we are on Steve Masters' homepage. We talked about this a little bit in the slide. But for example here, uh, notice that there's little callouts here uh, next to a project or there's callouts next to, spe to specific tasks. This really gives us the ability to work with this comments feature. So for example, if I wanted to look at the comments for this Xbox DVD project, you can see that there are comments so far that have started between Steve and Patrick about different things they want to collaborate on this. And by the way, you can include others on demand in this comment stream by getting people involved by CCing them on the comments. What's nice about this is I could actually initiate or participate in a comment thread here on an individual item like I did just here with the Xbox or in more of a social media type of approach, kind of like a Yammer or a Facebook, the idea here is, is that you can participate in multiple threads all from one single comment stream. So all of the threads that I'm currently involved in, I can actually reply right from here, and it will update the individual task from a central comment stream. So the idea here is very easy, highly accessible collaboration and communication across your resources. Now, if I wanted to go into a specific project, we talked about at the beginning of this, a proposed project, you may want to look at a resource capacity plan. If I go in and say I want to edit a resource plan, it will open up a resource capacity plan for me. Now here, as I had mentioned, you might early on in a proposed project only propose or basically allocate generic resource types. Notice that I could choose to plan these things in terms of hours, FTEs or percentages. 
So whatever the methodology that's important to you or the one that's most appropriate the way you do it, you can choose what the increments or unit of measure is that you want to use. Now that being said, what if it comes to the time, like I had mentioned earlier on, that uh, I need to determine who is going to be the actual project manager on this particular project? By being able to select this resource allocation and say, let me find matches for that. It's going to show me people that could fulfill that role and also show me their remaining availability. It looks to me that Eli Bowen has not only the role in the department, but the, also the uh, availability to fulfill this role that's requiring only half an FTE. What's nice about this is all I have to do is drag and drop. If I totally drag this up to the project manager role and say, let me replace this generic assignment with Eli, Eli has now been made the project manager on this from a system perspective and can, er, and can now be allocated to that project team. Now with negotiations turned on as an option in, in this solution, the project manager and the resource manager can collaborate and each provide their general acceptance of that so that they can actually accept the different assignments that have been requested and or allocated to them. Also in a very simple fashion, you can also uh, put multiple resources on to fulfill. Uh, a requirement here. So for example, it looks like I need a full FTE of effort of developer time, but maybe I don't envision having one developer consume all of that time. So if I take this developer requirement and I say find a match for those, I find some matches. David Oz is one uh, potential uh, person here. So instead of just doing a simple replace, what if I took David and I dragged David up to the developer role and I said, what I really want to do is I don't want to do a singular one-on-one -on -one replace, but I want to fulfill this. So now it's showing me that David is fulfilling the full one FTE with no remaining allocation needed on that particular developer requirement. And then potentially I could say, you know, Eric is going to join him on that. And if I drag Eric up and say, do you want to replace David or do you want to split the work with him, very simply it's going to show that uh, Eric and David are now each going to do half of that FTE of work to fulfill that developer requirement. Now you could go into each of these months and you could divvy up the work a little differently, but very easy through a drag and drop basis to fulfill and or replace different resource assignments uh, without having to fill in different specific cells of information. So the key is you've not only done the capacity planning, now you've done the allocation of these resources into the specific pieces. If I come in here and I want to start looking at all these resource capacity plans in aggregate, let me go to a broader portfolio. And in this case, I'll say, show me um, all of the projects and let me look at the resource analyzer, which is going to aggregate all of the resource capacity plans for all the different projects I've selected. So based on these projects, it's going to show me the projects, it's going to show me the resource allocations, and then down below by default it's going to show me where these resources are over and under allocated based upon this mix of projects that we've done here. Uh, not only can I see the more detailed resource allocations within each of the projects, just like we did in that resource capacity plan, but down below I can show different totaling capabilities. For example, now I'm showing all the planned resource, but what if I have a timesheet going later on? and I want to show the actual work associated with the totals on the plan. So now I can go in here and start looking at these columns and then allocate and show, okay, here's the actual work that we're actually bringing in against these uh, projects opposed to what we've planned in the capacity plan. So all the resource-oriented information is now available to us at any given point in time. The other pieces that we can do as well is roll these things up, not by the individual, but potentially say, all right, these individuals all roll into certain roles or departments, so let me say I want to roll this into roles instead of individuals and see where I am with that. And it looks like, for example, on the developer role, it looks like overall from a developer perspective and the capacity I have, I have some um, over allocation issues within that role, not just within specific individuals. So the key here is, is I can actually do things in here and do it in a what-if scenario. Notice there's a save scenario button here. Or I could say, you know, what if I took this project and what if I delayed everything out a couple months? What if I delayed that assignment? So I could actually uh, roll this out and I can actually make changes in here uh, with the right permissions in order to do that. 
Also, if I'm a functional manager, I could take those resource plans and look at it from that perspective. So instead of looking at it from a project-centric where I'm selecting projects and say, show me the information, what if I'm really interested in just my department? And I want to know what we're supporting from a departmental perspective on these projects and other work. So let's say, for example, I go into here and I say, let me see a view of the resource pool by department. And let's just say I own the software development department. I'll select all the people in my department. And let me look at the resource analyzer. Now, what this is going to do based upon the resource selection, instead of the project selection, is show me what projects and other work that we're supporting. So from that perspective, here are the projects now my department is charged with supporting. And here's the implications of all that for the people in my department. So the idea is I have some folks that are woefully underallocated or unused and other ones who are overallocated. But the idea is now from a functional manager's perspective, I can look at this and do some replanning or analysis based on that. Other aspects of this um, might be going to a list of proposed and active projects. And if I go in to select that list of projects and say, show me the modeler, this might give me a combination of scheduling, selection, and sequencing of projects that might give me some insights on what to, might be an optimum solution for us. So if I look at, say, in this case, resource budgets, and this is kind of a dollarized view of that, but the idea is let me look at this and say, you know, based upon our current budgets, I'm over under budget in these different resource type areas in each of these um, uh, months. So let's say, for example, one of my selections might be let me uncheck or delete a or not do a lower priority project. Well, it took care of some of my issues, but not all of them. So maybe one of I, uh, the other option I should think is what about sequencing of projects? I have to do it, but maybe I don't have to do it today. So what if I delayed that out several months? Now, all of a sudden, within 2012, I do not have any overallocations, and I've deferred the problem out to here, and I can deal with the 2013 portfolio through another scenario. The key here is, is that I can save different versions of the scenario, compare them, uh, get consensus, and actually do something that's uh, more resource optimized within our ability to deliver resources to this project and other types of work. The key here is, is that at any given point in time, all work is available to us. So, for example, if I wanted to look at oh, individual projects, and I wanted to, say, look at uh, a particular project here, and I wanted to see the associated tasks associated with the project, I could actually go and look at the total schedule for that project, with all the detailed tasks and resource assignments that are on them. Or, as a resource, I might focus down specifically on just my tasks within that project. So now I can go look and say, all right, I'm participating in this Xbox project. What's expected of me on this particular project? Now, sure, I can see this in my, my work, but now I'm seeing it in the context of this specific schedule, and I can light this up and update and provide updates to the tasks that I'm assigned to very easily and collaboratively within here. So we showed you the top-down capacity planning and what that looked like from a resource analysis perspective. Um, the other aspect we have, and if we looked at this from, say, a resource manager's perspective, is the concept of an assignment planner. You know, capacity planning is really done from the top down at a high level, but eventually you're going to assign people to very granular pieces of work. Some of it could be project in nature, some of it could be non-project in nature. So the assignment planner, and I'm just selecting, say, Adam Barr right now, it's going to aggregate and present to me all of his work across this. So, for example, here if I zoom in a little bit, what you'll see here is that I have issues, to-dos, project tasks, and other work items in here that are aggregating to have a, uh, an aggregate workload here, where I can see that in this uh, first week, week and a half, he's under-allocated, but then quickly becomes over-allocated for a period of time until he gets under-allocated again. 
So this may be a matter of doing some replanning, some shifting of work, some reassignment of this to uh, other people in order to make all this work. And I guess, you know, we can always schedule a deep dive if you want on more of this stuff, but given the time that we have, if I go in and look at some of the reporting that's available, we're building that rich set of information. We have all kinds of charting capabilities so that we can take any of the data in our solution and build robust different types of charting uh, with just configuration of these, much like you Excel, uh, configure an Excel chart. But if I wanted to go down and look at other information like, oh, I don't know, uh, some resource reporting, and I wanted to look at a um, resource capacity plan heat map across multiple resources so I could maybe push this out to other people after I viewed it. I could say, let me look at it for the current year. Um, I'll look at it for just the software development department. And then render a report on this to look at where the people in the software development department are over and under allocated very quickly. But this can also be pushed out to other formats like PDFs, uh, Word documents, Excel, so you can actually push these out to individuals on a scheduled basis. And I can actually drill into a report like this to see where somebody like Alan and what projects he's on that's actually driving his over and under allocation here. So in a nutshell, there's a lot of resource information, a lot of resource tools and capabilities that give you the ability to uh, manage resources from all perspectives on all different types of work. So with that, we really address the top-down and the bottom-up resource planning. We took it from resource capacity planning at the high level. Uh, we showed it at an FTE and an hours level at the portfolio item or project level. We then did resource allocation to put specific people to fulfill certain roles generically on, uh, uh, on individual projects and work efforts. We then uh, talked about assigning people to uh, operational type of work, more unstructured work like issues and change requests, service requests, etc. And then we talked about some of the mechanisms ongoing through execution of how we collaborate and do task management in process and be able to look at those things from a resource management perspective. So at the end of the day, this resource management capability, what it should be able to do for us is get people working on the right work at the right time with the right skill sets. So we can actually do some planning on the upfront. We can actually manage and monitor progress and uh, execution as we go on through and then do the adjustments that we need uh, to reflect changing conditions. Then we can do very strategic and very tactical resource allocation, whereby the efficiencies that we achieve should save us uh, great time and effort just procedurally, process-wise, and on the execution side, as well as being able to put all this into a singular solution and save us money on what we're doing from an overhead perspective on monitoring and maintaining and executing in different uh, distinct systems. So a little bit of a wrap-up on the business value proposition. By doing this all in a singular solution like an EPM Live, is there really is no need for separate expensive applications to manage each of these differing types of work. Also, uh, our solution is based on SharePoint. We can do this for you either online as a SaaS or a hosted model as a service, or install the capabilities you saw here very easily in your existing SharePoint farm as solutions and features to provide you this capability as an incremental add so that you can just get even more value out of your investment in SharePoint. Also, by getting people working in a single solution for all this, you can get increased efficiencies and user satisfaction and like lack of frustration by getting all work into a single solution and having your resources have one place to go to accomplish all these things. And if we do this right, you may be paying maintenance or ongoing license fees and support from a total cost perspective of multiple solutions that can be handled at one, that potentially there would be opportunity for you to retire one or more of those other solutions. So from a next steps perspective, you can get started today. If you go to epmlive.com, you'll see at our website at the top there's a button for a free trial. Uh, you can actually request a trial and we'll get you an environment that you can actually start doing these things hands on and then some beyond what I showed you today since we were focused really on resource management which is really only one dimension of what we do from a project portfolio and overall work management perspective. You can contact us at this email address or at this toll-free number. 
and also check out apps.epmlive.com. Uh, one of the things that we've innovated in this last year is pre-built applications that as an EPM Live customer you have access to at no additional charge. So if you have different flavors of resource and work management that you want to do from a service management perspective or new product development or other types of work, you can check those out and see a very robust set of applications that are available to you at no additional charge if you're an EPM Live customer. With that, I'd like to thank you for your time again today. Uh, Feel free to reach out to those uh, general numbers or to me specifically, uh, Jim Patterson, which is jpatterson at epmlive.com, and I hope you found value in the uh, presentation today. Also, if you go to our website at epmlive.com and you go into communities and go into documentation, uh, there will be access to some white papers, and there's a very good one on the resource management lifecycle that's out there right now as well. So thanks again, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day.